Next up, we have oh, one person, no. but she's actually going to be representing a second individual. So we have sort of the personification of Superwoman. I think tomorrow's guests will again know her better than maybe the people sitting here today. She's a well-known DJ, mother of three, an artist. She is Superwoman. Please welcome Ida Engbeck. Thank you. Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. <laughs> Thank you, Ida. And thanks for being with us uh, today. Thank you. Do you want to quickly share why you're here? Um, I was invited to a uh, speak by Jaren, who is um, part of the organization Love Tomorrow. And um, I have been part of this organization talking before on the lockdown uh, conference, <laughs> where I was talking about veganism and um, yeah, why I decided to go plant this. But this time I'm here to um, share a story about a man named Steven Donziger. So that's the purpose of this today. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and could you briefly, because you're also a DJ, you're yeah. going to be playing with us this evening, but also tomorrow. So um, what made you decide to use your podium as a DJ for activism purposes? Um, I suppose the opportunity to reach out to people um, called me. I um, have been, actually, I was here playing at this stage two weeks ago, <laughs> and it's very different to be here today. And I'm actually playing here tomorrow as well. But uh, traveling the world and having a global reach to people uh, called me to share what I believe in, basically. So I started to do that many years ago, uh, talking about veganism and uh, sustainability and uh, I was part of um, a course called uh, Building Our Regenerative Future. Uh, so I was working on that and that has led me to connect with uh, many people in this movement and uh, I'm just honored and happy to be a part of it and use my voice for something that is uh, bigger than only music. I think that's amazing. And do you also actually use the music that you play to sort of empower the people to become activistic themselves? Well, I think music is, you know, bringing people together from all around the world, as I said, and its um, frequencies raising the vibration and making people happy. So I suppose it's um, a beautiful thing to do, but uh, even more beautiful to be able to uh, also include a purpose. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. And you already mentioned you're here today because of a project that's very dear to you um, with Steven Donziger. Um, and unfortunately, of course, he cannot be with us today, and he'll explain a little bit later why that is. Could you tell us just a bit more about this project and why you find it so important? Yes. Um, well, it actually started when, when, the, when the Amazon rainforest was burning and it was all over media and mainstream media. Um, I took the opportunity to create a campaign where I was um, collecting money um, for an organization called Amazon Watch. So over one week, I managed to collect, I think it was 30,000 euros. Uh, and that led me to follow their work very closely. And I found out about a man named Steven Donziger, uh, who has an incredible story, who um, has gone the long way. He's an environmental and human rights lawyer uh, who lives in New York. He went to school with Obama at Harvard law school. And then 28 years ago, he, um, uh, he was called to Ecuador to uh, a site where Texaco had been extracting oil. And uh, they had uh, decided to dump toxic oil waste uh, into the rainforest. And um, he described it as an apocalyptic scene. It was um, a thousand Olympic-sized swimming pools. Um, the size of that, of a toxic oil waste that was left deliberately dumped. Um, they created pipes where it was leading directly into the rivers and lakes where 30,000 indigenous people were also living and they were terribly affected by this um, contamination, of course. Um, then he um, sued Chevron on behalf of this 30,000 people and uh, actually won uh, what's been called the biggest environmental uh, lawsuit in history. And uh, Chevron was supposed to pay $10 billion. I think it was $18 yeah. billion dollars first, but then it was taken down to $10 billion. And to before you spoil this, <laughs> shall, we, shall we listen to his message? We should listen to his yes. message. But I'm happy to introduce you to him because I believe that most people don't know about him and it's important what he's doing. So let's listen to <laughs> Stephen's message now. 
Hello, Ida, and everyone at the Love Tomorrow Conference. My name is Stephen Donziger. I'm a human rights lawyer in New York City, and I'm so honored to be asked to share my perspective with you today. Um, I represent indigenous peoples and farmer communities in the Amazon of Ecuador. And we filed a lawsuit against a big U.S. oil company, Chevron, after Chevron deliberately and systematically dumped billions of gallons of cancer-causing oil waste onto indigenous ancestral lands, poisoning the water and poisoning rivers and streams the indigenous peoples used for fishing and bathing and drinking. I first went to Ecuador in 1993 and I saw literally ginormous lakes of oil on the floor of the Amazon. I saw hundreds of pits that the U.S. oil company Chevron had deliberately gouged out of the floor of the jungle, not lining them and putting pipes in the sides of them so they could run the cancer-causing toxic oil waste into rivers and streams that indigenous peoples and farmer communities were using for their drinking water. Cancer rates have skyrocketed. And this is a company that showed no regard for the environment or for life, for our ecosystem. It wasn't just the people who were suffering, but what about the plant life, the trees, the animals? This is literally the most biodiverse environment on the planet. And this oil company came in and in the name of profit caused widespread destruction and created a mass industrial poisoning that killed not only the people who were living there, but many animals and many plants and trees. This is the world's worst oil-related catastrophe. It is called by experts the Amazon Chernobyl. We won the lawsuit for an epic amount of money, $10 billion, and rather than pay, Chevron then hired 60 law firms and 2,000 lawyers back here in New York to try to silence me. And that led to a U.S. judge ordering me to turn my computer over to Chevron, which would have violated my ethical obligations to my clients to maintain confidential communications. After I appealed that order, the judge locked me up in my own home, where I have been for 993 consecutive days, all because I wouldn't comply with an illegal court order that I violate the privileges of my clients. And worse, I was prosecuted not by the U.S. government, but by a private law firm that had Chevron as a client. I'm the only person in U.S. history ever prosecuted privately by a corporation. I'm the only lawyer in U.S. history ever detained for challenging in court a civil order that won turn over confidential communications. This was pure judicial retaliation manipulated by Chevron to try to silence me, but they have failed. I am here speaking to you. I have gotten through it. And I think it's very important as you begin the festivities of the next few days that you remember that we can do this. I was attacked because of our success. They will go after you if you get on the front lines and are even mildly effective. But if enough of us do it collectively, individually, in, a, in our global community all across the world, this industry will not be able to withstand the pressure and it can begin to be phased out such that our planet and our vital ecosystems and life on this earth can survive. So have a great time the next few days. I wish I could be there personally. I can't because they won't let me travel. But I'm with you in spirit. I'm with you with my heart and soul. Just understand change comes from the bottom up. It comes from all of us. It comes from citizens all over the world forcing their governments to respond to the climate crisis. Thank you, Ida, for your leadership. Thank you to everyone there at the conference for caring. And I look forward to hopefully being there next year in person. Thanks so much. Well, he definitely deserves that applause, a, hu a true environmental martyr. Um, as Stephen said, he currently cannot travel. So how do you plan on sort of voicing his message from now on? Um, I actually met Stephen personally because after I shared his message, um, he reached out to me to say thank you. Um, and then we started to have a conversation. So the last time I went to New York to play, uh, he had been free for 10 days after his 993 days of house arrest. And he actually came to one of my gigs. Uh, and it was incredible to meet him and his wife uh, and have dinner with them. And he also invited me to come with him down to Ecuador 
to uh, to see this destruction and maybe make a little bit of a documentary about it or to you know to try to highlight it as much as I possibly can. That would be a dream for me to be able to support this because it has become a very personal cause to me now as well. Especially because most people still don't know about uh, about him, even though it's it's such yeah. a big uh, thing that he's been doing. Yeah. I can imagine, because mm. did any of you know about Steven Donziger before today? Anyone? No. Well, now you do. So thank you again, Ida, for voicing his message. And just before you leave us, one more question, because this is not the only time you're going to be on this podium with us today. So when are you playing? Uh, I'm playing here tomorrow. And uh, I don't remember exactly what time. Maybe at 7? Like and you're doing a DJ yes. set today as well, right? I'm doing a DJ set today as well. It's going to be something very different because uh, I was asked to do a set for people sitting down. It's not going to be a proper dancing set. So uh, it's uh, including indigenous voices and um, people talking from the Yavanava tribe and Paul Stamets talking about the mycelium network. And yeah, it's a very, it's a very different set, but uh, something, something from the heart. Good. Thank you so much, Ida. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>